Hello and welcome back. So today I am going to be comparing my real power data to what Strava estimates. So this can be useful if you don't have a power meter yet and you just want to see if these numbers are at all accurate. So let's jump in quickly. So what I did is I downloaded my fit files from Strava and then I used a website called Fit File Tools to strip the power data and then I re-uploaded it to Strava. So using this method it's the exact same ride and Strava just has to analyze it a second time to estimate its own power. So we've got the real data and we've got Strava's estimated data. So let's see how this works and how close it came. So on the top we have the power data which Strava has estimated and on the bottom we have the real power data. So both rides are exactly the same but the top ride, the Strava estimated power, is 187 watts and then the real power data is 191 watts. So to be honest, it's not bad. It's pretty similar. So the difference is only 7 watts, which really isn't too bad. So I thought I would repeat this experiment with more of my rides. So I did the same process with 10 other rides and I put all the information into a spreadsheet. So we've got the average power here and the estimated power here and then I worked out the percentage increase or decrease on it. Generally, it seems to be quite close within three or four percent but there's some major outliers here and it seems the outliers tend to be on much shorter rides with a lower average power in terms of the real wattage difference it's normally within 10 or 20 watts which isn't actually that bad it's better than I thought it would be but in terms of percentage it's even a bit lower so yeah overall I was quite surprised at how accurate Strava's estimated power is I thought it would be really far off. Obviously, this is going to vary based on how accurate the information you give to Strava is. So in your profile, you have settings about your weight and your bike's weight. So if you make sure these are accurate, your ride's average power should be accurate as well. Well, quite accurate. So we've got real power, estimated power on a pretty savage uphill section here, category three climb took me 18 minutes and I averaged 294 watts and that's the real power and then Strava estimated me putting out 262 watts so on this uphill segment the estimated power is much less than the real power let's see if it's the same on another segment okay so same climb this is just the second part of it um, this one's about 10 minutes and real power was 299 estimated power was 269 so it's the same thing again. Strava is estimating my power to be lower than it really is. But that's just on uphill sections. Let's check out a downhill section. All right, time for a downhill bit. So the real power for this descent was 51 watts and it took two minutes and 22 seconds. And the estimated power was 85 watts. So in this case, the estimated power is much higher than my real power. So let's check another one, see if it's the same. Okay, so this downhill is a bit longer. This one took five minutes and the real power is 89 watts, but the estimated power was 87 watts. That is actually pretty good. Um, the other comparisons so far have been pretty far off, but this one did quite well. Yeah, not bad, not bad at all. So this segment is pretty flat. It took about five minutes and my real power is 172 watts. My estimated power was 147 watts. So again, about 25 watts out. So this bit is not too great. So what conclusions can we draw? I was actually pretty impressed with how accurate it is over the course of a ride. Normally it's only like 1 or 2% out. There are some massive outliers when you have a really short ride and you're not putting down much power. So it seems when your power is higher, it tends to be a bit more accurate or if you're on a longer ride, it seems more accurate. So the estimated power tends to be lower than the real power when you're going uphill. But on downhill segments, the estimated power is higher. Not by much, but a bit higher. And then finally, on the flat segments, the estimated power is lower. Obviously, this might vary depending on your weight and how aerodynamic you are. So if you want to try this yourself, then feel free to give it a go. It'll be quite interesting to see what everyone else gets. So Strava takes into account your weight and your bike's weight, but it doesn't take into account your height. So that means it doesn't know anything about how aerodynamic you are. So maybe in the future that's something Strava could add in. Maybe that would make the estimated power more accurate. So overall, I would say it's definitely worth getting a power meter because you can actually see your instantaneous power. But with Strava's estimated power, you've got to wait until after your ride to see it. 
So yeah, power meters these days are definitely getting a lot cheaper. So I definitely recommend trying to pick one up. It really helps you, especially when you're doing like a long uphill segment and you want to make it to the top without blowing up. So overall, I think it was quite interesting how Strava's estimated power is. It's something I wanted to know for a while. I think if you keep most of the metrics the same between your rides, it can be quite useful just to see if you're getting stronger overall. So yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you found it interesting. If you like it, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more, please subscribe. Thank you for watching.